Hi there. In this video, we're going to talk about some data analysis examples for assignment number four. So let's start with assignment four, the document, and see what you're required to do. So, so far, you've seen a lot about data, data sets, what we can do with data, um, how we can do the different charts, why should we have clean data to be able to do something, and what kind of analysis, what kind of questions and answers can you get from data. And this really leads into our next unit, which is artificial intelligence, where we use data to teach systems to come up with models, predict prices, predict vaccines, help us find vaccines based on the data we have and things like that, right? So that's really what this is. So in this assignment, you are given a data set and you are asked to obtain insights and information, meaning what kind of questions can you ask from the data set that can be answered? Um, how can you quantify that with charts and how can you interpret that data and how can you come to conclusions? And how does it affect the environment, the society, the community that you live in? So here is the original data set that you're supposed to work with. I'm going to let you figure that out. I'm going to show you the sample. The sample data set that I have that we're going to start with is a dog data set. I have breed groups of dogs and dog breeds within each group, number of dogs available and the number of dogs adopted. Okay, so we are adopting dogs from the number available. So looking at this data set, you need to think about, you know, what kind of questions can I ask from this? Uh, it's not like I have a ton of data, but again, this is an example. So think about the questions that you could ask. I could perhaps ask what breed group of dog is the most adopted, right? Which one is most adopted? What is the maximum number or, or you know, which has the highest percentage of adoption rate? Something like that. So with that, if we go through and try to answer those questions, I have a sample answer sheet that I have created for you that I used with this data set. I also have a sample Google Collabs notebook where I have some code that will help you get started as well. So as you go through this document, it asks you to go through and answer some of these questions. The first thing you do is state the problem or question. After looking at the given data set, come up with a question. What is the question that you can ask for your data set? So for my data set, we already talked about it. Um, the question that I want to ask, and I'm going to go through the answers section here. This is a sample answer sheet, and here's my sample um, answers. Say the problem or question. To receive full credit, you must state a quantitative question or prediction that could be investigated using this data set. So which breed group has the most number of dogs adopted was my question. You can have more than one question. You can explain your question. The more you put in there, the more it helps clarify your answer, right? So you go through pretty much and answer all of these questions, and you have the same thing in your assignment document. And that's what we're going to do. And then there's some criteria for success at the bottom that says how you're going to be graded. So look through all of that. It's, it's very much, and I said at the bottom, it's very much like a science experiment that you did. Remember, you came up with a hypothesis and you had an experiment that you did to see if your hypothesis was correct. If it was, do you have enough data to support it? If it was not, do you have any enough data to support it as well? And what are your conclusions, right? That's what we're going to be doing here. So that was my question. And what information do I need for that question? So if you look at our data set, I need the group because that's what I focused on, not on the individual breeds. I need the group column. And I also need, I perhaps need the number of dogs adopted column that will tell me the most number of dogs adopted. I could also have the total dogs available because you could also say, well, based on the total dogs available, how many dogs were adopted, right? Sometimes you only have 100 dogs and you adopted all 100 dogs. But what if you had 1,000 dogs and if you adopted, you know, um, 800 dogs, which is more? So depending on how you want to answer that question. And I show you both versions of that. 
Um, so I said I would need breed group, total dogs available, number of dogs adopted. I would need breed group so I can group all the breeds together because there are some things in your assignment document. If you look at that second question, it gives you some details on what you need to answer. So you need to answer all these questions. Why is this information important? Is it quantitative or categorical? What type of charts will you use? And that's what I've answered all of those questions here. I would need the breed group so I can group all the breeds together. I would need both quantitative columns so I can calculate it, you know, calculate the percentage um, to figure out the most dogs adopted based on the total number available. Okay. Breed group is categorical. The other two columns are quantitative. As you know, we see numbers, the group is categorical, and I would use bar charts and donut charts is what I said. The donut chart will help me get like a percentage, right? So the representation, so that's where we go to our Google Collapse to do the representation so I could get these charts. And so if you go here, I give you the sample data set. I give you the sample Google Collabs. You can use this. And your assignment also has a starter Google Collabs that you can use for your assignment. So I would start with that. Use the sample. Whenever you work with the sample, please make a copy of it. Do not just change it. So you would go to file and say, make a copy in my drive. That way, it will keep all your changes. If you try to make changes to this, it will not save any of the changes. OK, so starting with the top. You want to start and run this Google Collapse notebook from the top down. Okay, if you run some things in between, it will not run it. So you want to start from the top and say, well, I want to import everything. And I have my question here, which breed groups are the most adopted or, you know, however you want to phrase that, or you can just copy it from here. I have it in here, has the most number of dogs adopted. So run this first. It imports all our libraries that are needed then this is very important. You have to download the file, which is if you're doing your PG data set for your assignment or whatever it is, you click on this file, it will download it. I already have it downloaded. Then I'm going to, here is my file, which is called Cure Sample right there. I can drag it and drop it here. The key is when you drag it and drop it, you want to make sure you're in this mode. If you're not in this mode, and if you're in a different mode here, any of these, for example, if you try and drag it and drop it here, we are in trouble. It will not let you drop it. So click on this folder, make sure it's a sample data, and then drag it and drop it. And you should see your CSV file here. Once you see that, then you can click on the next one here. It will create a data frame of this data. And if you want to know how did it work, you click on this. You should see all your column names here. If you get any red errors, then you'll know that something is not right. Okay, so as long as you have downloaded this file, drag it and drop it over here, it should work. Then you click on df.head. It shows you, head just shows you like the five, first five rows. It shows you what's being loaded from the file. And then I go on to do some code i group by breed group total dogs available dot sum so it's going to group all the groups breed groups together so for example if you run this it said i have herding i have 82 dogs terrier i have 94 dogs and so on and so forth these are total dogs available now you can always go here and like i said make a copy of it before you do anything um but you can add code what I would do is I would take this and copy it. This is how you try a few different things. Copy it, add code, and put it in here. And total dogs available, you've already done. How about number of dogs adopted? So you can just come here and copy this. And instead of this, put in that number of dogs adopted. So you also get a sum of the number of dogs adopted. Okay? And play around with the code. So I'm going to delete that. Now, bar chart. Okay, so what if I wanted to do some bar charts for these things? So I group by breed group dot sum. Okay, so it's going to group them essentially like this, the sum of all the different things. So instead of having to get it separately, you can do it right here. Breed group dot sum says, okay, total dogs available, the sum of them, number of dogs adopted. And then to do the bar chart based on each column. In this case, I'm doing the bar chart grouping by number of dogs adopted. 
okay? So grouped by the number of dogs adopted. So if you see here is my bar chart. Now I haven't done any of the labels. You really should do all the labels because that the rubric is based off. It's a perfect score if you have all the labels and the axis and everything done, which I don't have. You should have a title. So these three things should be filled up in your assignment. So don't leave it like mine where I don't have any of this filled up. So if you look at this, you can see 50 is the number of herding group dogs, 51, which is slightly more than that. So these are the total number of dogs adopted. It has nothing to do with the percentage, right? Irrespective of what the total number of dogs are available. These are just the number of dogs adopted. Okay, that's one chart. Now I have a donut or pie chart, which will pretty much look at this and give me the percentage of dogs adopted. So if the total number of dogs adopted are whatever, 50 out of that. That's what this is showing me. So if you look at this, the most is terrier because that's where we have 51 dogs. That's the most, right, of the ones that are adopted. The next is herding, the next is working, and the next is toy. So it has nothing to do with the number of dogs available. Remember, it's just the total number of dogs adopted and the percentage of each group. That's what this gives me, okay? Now, the next chart is with percentages for each one. So what I did here is I have two variables that I created, the total number of dogs available per group and the total number of dogs adopted per group, okay? So if I divide the number adopted by the number available, that'll give me the percentage, right, for each group. And that's what I've done here. So if you look at this, the herding is really more, it's 61% of the dogs have been adopted, right? Because now it's based on not just the number of dogs, but it's based on the availability. I've calculated it. So 50 out of 82 is more than 51 out of 94, right? So that's what this third chart gives me. And so you can see herding dogs are the most adopted based on the available dogs. Okay, so it depends on what you are looking to explain to me. And there's no right or wrong answer as long as you quantify everything with data and say, this is what, this is the perspective that I'm looking at it from. Uh, here's an example of a scatter plot. It's just to show you that two quantitative information, total dogs available, number of dogs adopted. You can see from here, uh, nothing great, but that most of the dogs available are within this number. We don't have too many of them available over here. So again, does it mean anything? Maybe not. That was just to show you that you can have a scatter plot. Now, if you look at my explanations and you should have something like this, uh, going down representation, I copy all my charts and put it in here. You can have your extra charts, whether you use it or not, it's okay. Um, but they all don't have a title in my case and X axis and Y axis, and you must have all of those things. Okay, so it is missing in mine. Um, then your interpretation, for example, I say from the first bar chart, we can see that the most number of dogs adopted is the terrier breed with 51 dogs. This is closely followed by herding group with 50 dogs. What is very important here is if you look at the prompt, it says to receive full credit, you must provide an explanation of information provided from the charts in mathematical terms. You must have numbers in these answers. If you simply tell me the terrier breed was the most adopted, without giving me any evidence or numbers, then I'm gonna mark you down for it. And that is not how we do data analysis, right? Quantitative reasoning says you must have quantitative information. So you must give me numbers, and that's why we do these charts. So if you look at the second one, it says the donor chart gives us the same information in percentages with the terrier having the most adopted dogs at 29.5 followed by herding. But if you look at the last bar chart with percentages, you see that the total number of dogs available and the total number of dogs adopted, the herding group is the most at 61%. So whatever you put in here, I want to see numbers, quantify your answers, justify your answers with numbers. And conclusions must also be based on that. So based on the interpretations from our, we can conclude that the herding group has the most adopted dogs at 61%. Again, this is based on my perspective from the total number of dogs available. Okay, so make sure you add your explanation here with numbers and the societal impact, how it impacts it. Anytime you can use numbers from your charts, that would be the best way to do it. Okay, so that sums up
this assignment for quantitative reasoning assignment. So now you should be able to open up your data set, your CSV file, and your Google Collabs notebook, make a copy of it, and then do what you need to to get your charts and to put in your answers.